Right now at six, we start with the war in Ukraine. Russian troops are now occupying Europe's largest nuclear power plant in Ukraine. U.S. leaders have called the Russian attack on the plant extremely dangerous. We are now getting a look at the aftermath of the Russian strike to an apartment building north of the capital of Kyiv. You can actually see this heavy damage to several buildings. In another city, Russian attacks have left people with no water and no power. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the war may not be over soon and that the U.S. and its allies must sustain pressure on Russia through sanctions. We take these actions not because we oppose the Russian people. We do not. We regret that tens of millions of Russians will suffer because of the dangerous decisions made by a tiny circle of corrupt leaders and their cronies who have consistently put their interests above those of the Russian people who are doing everything they can to hide their war of choice from the Russian public. 1.2 million people have now fled Ukraine. In Russia, President Vladimir Putin signed a bill introducing a prison sentence of up to 15 years for anyone spreading information that goes against what the Russian government reports. Russia has also banned Facebook in the country as well. Nana IT made and Indiana companies pulling the plug on their business in Russia due to the war in Ukraine. It's a stance many are taking in the name of human rights. I team aides Jasmine Miner on this tough decision some businesses have in choosing between ethics and profit. Jasmine. Well, the business ethics professor I spoke to today explained there are different kinds of powers in place when it comes to the war in Ukraine. You have what's called sharp power, which is what he says Vladimir Putin is using by way of force through the military. But then you have sticky power, which is the economics of everything. And he says it's not always easy for a company to draw that line between politics and sales. I do not envy anybody who's in a position of a corporation or government in order to figure out exactly what to do is because this is this is largely unprecedented. It can be a tough decision for businesses to look at what they could lose in terms of profit and what they could gain in reputation. Depending on the product that you're doing, it makes a big difference of the values that are behind the product. While Rolls-Royce says they've stopped all business with Russia, less than 1.5 percent of their business is associated there. So for them, it doesn't have as much of a drastic impact. For other places like Eli Lilly. If some of their production facilities, uh, if some of the, um, uh, the minerals or the things, the ingredients they need in order to make drugs that save lives, there is a strong reason to say we should be saving lives. They showcase their support this week for Ukraine by lighting up their building with yellow and blue. They, too, have a small percentage in sales in Ukraine and Russia, combining for less than 1%. But they say they still provide access to medicines in the region. I mean, Putin clearly is using sharp power and the rest of the world is using sticky power uh, to try to basically strangle uh, the Russian economy. Tim Ford is a business ethics professor at IU. He says fighting that shark power for businesses is trickier than it has been before. It wasn't corporate scandals that made a difference of why students in business schools wanted to have more ethics courses. It was these things. He says it's the social market now and the power consumers have to have their voices heard. I was shopping at Target and I saw uh, Russian vodka. And I almost walked up to the front of the, the store and said, I'd really prefer that you not sell this anymore. We also reached out to other major companies based here in Indiana, like Cummins, Salesforce, and Anthem, to see what their stance is on any business ties they possibly have with Russia. And I did not hear back yet. I'm Jasmine Miner for Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook. Jasmine, thank you for that perspective. You can actually blame the war on Russia for rising gas prices that you're seeing here in Indiana and honestly all across the country. That's according to the Gas Buddy. News aide's Camilla Fernandez spoke with Hoosiers, feeling that impact. It's definitely a struggle. I uh, live alone, so I pay all my bills. Gas prices have gone up across the state, and many are wondering when they'll see relief at the pump. I got to tell you, it's it's a real headache for Uber drivers. According to AAA, today the average price for regular gas in Indiana is $3.82 per gallon. That's about 44 cents higher than last week's average price. At the Circle K near the Indianapolis International Airport, drivers are paying $4.09 per gallon for regular gas and nearly $5 for its Shell V-Power Premium gas. Jeffrey Payne is an Uber driver. Payne says he picks up a lot of his clients from the airport, so it's the closest gas station. He says the increase in gas prices is making an impact on his job. We make our living uh, doing this and driving people around 
and when the gas prices keep going up and up, it makes this very difficult to make any money at doing this and helping other people out to get from place to place. On North Delaware Street near local Mexican restaurant Cantina, drivers are paying $3.89 per gallon for regular gas. Business owner Colin Kendall says he's hopeful that prices will drop again. A lot of it, people have gotten used to the super low gas prices we saw back in 2020, so every spike is a, a really big deal, but you know this will pass too, just like everything else. Camilla Fernandez is Wish TV, wishtv.com and follow us on Facebook. Camilla, thank you. An energy policy expert says those gas prices are just the beginning of the war's effects. News 8's Garrett Burquist is here to explain how this could hit the rest of your wallet. Alexis, the immediate impact comes from Russia's ability to sell oil to Europe. Russia is the world's third largest oil producer and Europe is one of its biggest markets. I talked to former Indianapolis Mayor Greg Ballard. He's focused on energy policy since he left office. He says regional supply shocks reverberate throughout the global oil market. That means higher prices at the pump. And he says it could make inflation worse. Everything that we do in America and around the world requires energy. Everything. And that price is in the product of everything that we do. It's in the, it's in the grocery store. It's in your buying your cars. It's, in, it's just absolutely in everything. And so the, those prices are going to impact all those commodities that we have to buy. So based on that, what would your advice be to the average Hoosier? My, my advice is buckle down because the prices are going to uh, stay inflationary, I think, for quite a while. Ballard says the United States and the world need to invest in local energy sources to reduce their dependence on oil producing countries. He says that might need to involve fossil fuels in the short term. You can see much more of my interview with Ballard this Sunday on All Indiana Politics. Garrett Bergquist, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook.